Where are we going next? I think we're going downstairs somewhere. Delta Country. Okay. You go through this. Over here. Okay. That's the big thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where the water flows. The Mississippi River has the third largest drainage basin in the world. Fresh water from more than 40,000, excuse me, 40%, yeah, I know. 40% of the United States empties into the Gulf of Mexico. Along with the water, sediment and pollutants from 31 states flow into the Gulf. This one, satellite image taken April 2009 showing sediment dumping into the Gulf of Mexico. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's dirt. And yeah. Everything else that ends up in the Mississippi, the Tennessee, the Ohio, Missouri. Pollution, too. Yeah. Anything that ends up in any of those rivers from beginning to end yeah. ends up right there. <laughs> the dead zone. Nutrient runoff from agricultural and other human activities ends up in the Gulf, causing a seasonal overgrowth of algae each spring. A chain reaction is triggered that depletes the water of oxygen. Sea creatures cannot survive in these conditions. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Gulf of Mexico dead zone is the second largest human-caused hypoxic area in the world. Jeez. That is 1976. And that is 2001, 25 years later. Look how much it grew. Yeah. Wow. The Louisiana Delta just juts into the sea. This triangular wedge of land is formed by the sediments carried by the vast network of rivers upstream. Marshy sections, called bayous, slow the river's pace as it moves toward the delta. As the sediments settle to the bottom, new land is formed. The Mississippi's massive delta is always changing as the water moves throughout this complex network of bayous, marshes, and man-made channels. That's a freshwater bayou. Act for Clean Water. The goal of the 1972 Clean Water Act was to ensure that the nation's waters would be fishable, swimmable, and drinkable. Our rivers are healthier today because of this law, but the Gulf's dead zone shows we have room for improvement. Learn what you can do to help keep our local waters clean, which helps all life downstream at TNA or TNAqua.org. That's a great blue heron. Expert Mississippi. This is the Mississippi River. Right from Baton Rouge. Freshwater empties into the sea. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, here down. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't exist 300 years ago. Yeah. Most of this. Three, just 300 years ago. Which means New Orleans uh -huh. is right here. Uh huh. I think Slidell is right about here. Um, a little maybe. bit further east. I think a little bit further east. Um, eight runs along here, ten runs along uh -huh. here. They come together. Eh, it might be right in here. Okay. A little bit further east. Here's, right here. yep. here's, the, here's the big bridge. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think it's this right here. Uh huh. We have a video that crossing that Lake Pontchartrain. Like crossing Pontra this, train this right here, the uh -huh. skinniest point of Lake Pontchartrain. Yeah. Is where that I 55 Lake Pontchartrain bridge is. Yep. But look at all that feeds into this. Mm -hmm. Ohio, Mississippi starts way up here. Yeah, in Minnesota. <laughs> Here's where the Missouri starts. Okay. Yellowstone feeds into the Missouri. This is the Platte River. Yeah. Arkansas River. It starts in Colorado. It starts in Colorado. Goes through Kansas, Oklahoma, then The Arkansas. Canadian River. <laughs> yeah. Canadian River starts in New Mexico. And the Red River. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of river. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Level 3 Delta Country. So we started on Level 4, the Cove Forest. Went to Level 3 Discovery this Hall is... and Delta Country, which is where we are right now. Yep. And then Level Delta. 2, Rivers of the World, Turtles of the World, and Tennessee River Gallery. 
Level one is main lobby, family restrooms, gift shop, and level A, auditorium res and restrooms. And here is the map. And, and we basically kind of went well, through here. No, we are here. Yeah. But. Okay. So we came in like right, right here. I believe went so. this way. Uh huh. And now we're coming this way. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, you'll this. Well, see, we just came from Discovery Hall. Oh, we came, we went down this way. Well, no, we haven't seen that th yet. This is below confused. us. This I don't is know. below us. This is above us. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> That's a messed up map. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're back outside again, kind of. Yeah. Okay. He got spots on his back. He looked at me and said, You making fun of me? No, I'm not making fun of you. I just never seen you. There's one. There's one getting in the water. <laughs> He's checking us out. There's a couple right there. There's a fish over there. Delta Swamp. Swamps are a type of wetland. Wetlands provide a multitude of benefits ranging from wildlife habitat to water purification and erosion prevention. Eastern mud turtle, 4 and 7 8 inches. Razorback musk turtle, 5 inches. Sweat. And look up here. Yeah, it, it I distorts. <laughs> I see the fish down here. Yellow blotched map turtle, 8 inches. Chicken turtle, 6 inches. Okay. Way over there. Yeah. <laughs> Barber's map turtle, 5 or 13 inches. And uh, that's the last one. Good size turtles. Yeah. Here comes that dotted one. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that turtle. Oh, that one? On the branch. Oh, whoa. <laughs> David didn't see that one. Yeah, there's that one. David didn't see the one on the branch. I am so pretty. <laughs> He's sunny. Reptile recovery. American alligators are found throughout the southeastern United States. This once endangered reptile now thrives in wetlands and swamps. Hunted to near extinction, American alligator populations reached an all-time low in the 1950s and were believed doomed for extinction. The population declines were due to overhunting and loss of critical wetland habitats. Great American Success Story The Endangered Species Act of 1973 prohibited alligator hunting, allowing the species to recover in many areas. Due to the success of monitoring and reintroduction programs, American alligator populations rebounded. The species was delisted on the endangered species list in 1987. Limited harvests are now allowed in many states. There's a big fish. Now yeah, that's the one I couldn't see looking at the top right there. Historically, American alligators grew to a length of more than 19 feet. When their numbers diminished, so did their size. Huge individuals are rare in the wild today, but may be coming back. In 2015, a 15-foot alligator was caught in Alabama, weighing in at 1,011 pounds. Dude, you need to go on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, David. Get that sign before you go over there. Sword Spine Snook, 14 inches. Golden Red Horse, 30 and a half inches. Pearl River Map Turtle, 11 inches. Right here. Spotted Turtle, 5 and a half inches. 
and Barber's Map Trail, which we saw around the corner here. Oh, look at that big fish. Look at the neck on that guy. Maybe that one's smaller. Yeah. Maybe yeah. And David wants me to get this sign over here before we continue. What is a wetland? Wetlands are seasonally or continuously water saturated lands that support specialized plants. Wetlands vary widely in appearance due to many factors that can be found from the tundra to the tropics and on every continent except Antarctica. Well, yeah, I can understand that one. That's a Louisiana swamp. There's a bullfrog. There's a male and female wood ducks. And an alligator swimming through blackwater swamp. Swamps of the southern U.S. Swamps are forested wetlands where trees like cypress, mangrove, and tupelo are found. An icon of the swamp, the bald cypress tree, is made for wetlands. Cypress trees have wide bases called buttresses, which help keep them standing in the saturated soil. The knobs growing out of the ground and water, called cypress knees, are part of their root system. Spanish moss often seen hanging from cypress branches are colonies of little plants called epiphytes, I guess. Epiphytes do not need soil. They receive their water and nutrients from the moisture in the air and rainwater. Water in swamps often have a black tone due to tannins from decaying leaves. Slow moving water and leaf litter produces a dark acidic stain just as steeping tea leaves stains water in your cup. Some swamps have low levels of dissolved oxygen. Because, because of this, fish like bowfin and alligator gar might be seen gulping air at the water surface. They can use their swim bladder to breathe air. Wetlands comprise only around 5% of the continental U.S. Around 40% are coastal wetlands that support both freshwater and marine species. Changes in sea levels caused by climate change are expected to greatly impact co coastal wetlands with the potential to disrupt the U.S. seafood industry. And it just got really busy up there. So we're going to group that came in together right now. Yeah, we're going to pause here and let this clear out before we continue. Gator crossing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody left. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's Spanish moss. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Hey, he's celebrating the fourth. Yeah, who would never get close enough to do that? Yeah, uh, not me. See his red down on the body. <laughs> That's cool. Uh -huh. Not sure if there's anything else in here. Oh yeah, he's coming this way. Right on the other side of the log. That's Josh. <laughs> oh, he went down. Yep, he's swimming underneath. There he is. There's something down there? Oh, that's a, is that a snapper? Oh, wow. It's hard there to see with the, yeah, the glare on there. Boy, that's a good guy. Somebody said there's a snapper down there somewhere. Oh, there's another one right behind him. 
Oh, there he is. That one's got white toenails. Okay. If you get close to the thing, you won't see. Yeah, there's another one over there. Oh, okay. There's at least... Oh, there's another one back there. I just saw there's it. Yeah. There's, that's not the same one. No, that's a different one back there. There's two up there. There's these two down here. Oh, there's so... Holy oh, crap. A couple more over there. I can't kneel down. Oh, Oh, there he is. That's an alligator snapping turtle. Okay. That's the one that you definitely don't want to get to yeah. hold of your finger because you will not have one. Keep your fingers away from his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I see him. Uh, wow. He's hiding. Oh, I see it. And there was a gar in here. He was right in here just a minute ago. <laughs> Yeah. That's huge. Did you know the alligator snapping turtle is less aggressive than the common snapping turtle because the species does not encounter terrestrial predators like the highly mobile common snapping turtle? So it's not necessarily the one you want to worry about because he hasn't come out of the water yet. Yeah, but his size. Yeah. <laughs> 32 inches. Gender of alligator offspring is determined by nest temperature. Cooler nests produce females, warmer nests produce males. American alligator, 16 and a half feet. Delta swamp. In the dry season, alligators dig and scrape up areas to create pools called gator holes. Alligator car, 10 feet. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Right there. Are you just going around the corner here? Yeah. Ambush predator. Lying motionless and with its mouth agape, alligator snapping turtles patiently wiggle a small worm like appendage on their tongues to attract prey into their mouth. Once a fish gets too close to this fishing lure, wham, the powerful jaws snap shut. And that's what that worm-like thing looks like. Ancient River Giant. The alligator snapping turtle is the largest freshwater turtle in North America and one of the world's largest turtles. Males can exceed 250 pounds and two and a half feet in length. Females rarely exceed 50 pounds. Wow. Large males are almost entirely aquatic due to their size, but females build nests on land. A captive alligator snapping turtle is known to have lived at least 80 years. It is very likely they are capable of exceeding 100 years of age. And there's somebody with one of those. Hunter versus hunted. Although these fierce looking turtles are excellent anglers, their numbers have drastically or dramatically declined. Alligator snapping turtles, like many other turtle species, have been over -har harvested in the wild. Though the species is now protected across most of its range, finding large inv individuals is rare. Conservation measures and restoration efforts may help these shelled river giants repopulate their native range and regain their once magnificent sizes. In 2014, scientists recognized that the alligator snapping turtles in Apalachicola okay, and Suwannee rivers were different enough to be described as two new species. And then we got uh, the ranges for the alligator snapping turtle Apalachicola. Okay, alligator snapping turtle and Suwannee alligator snapping turtle. There, fishy, fishy. Does it catch one? 
Yep. <laughs> he caught it. The other fish better swim away fast before he gets hungry again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's just playing there. No There's that car. Better look at him. Yeah. Yeah. There's four right here. Four alligators. There's one that's looking at us. So they want. When they go to get them out. Yeah, because look how look how pointy. I haven't seen one with blue fingernails yet. That one's got pink. Smile, you're on YouTube. <laughs> There's what they call a sniper snake. Okay. <laughs> That's a cypress meat. Yep. And that one has pink or purple toenails. <laughs> they probably wrap their mouths before they do that, huh? He's just looking at us. What? He's staring right here. They can open that. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, you see how his eyes kind of closed? Right here. Huh? How his eyes closed? Uh huh. Okay, he's a hand of it. He's right there in front of you. Who is that one? He got open his mouth. Stay right there. Let me take a picture of you in the mouth. Hey, so what? Environmental engineers. The gopher tortoise is one of only five native tortoises in North America. This species lives along the dry sand ridges of the coastal plains of the southeast United States. A keystone species. Individual gopher tortoises dig multiple burrows which can be up to 30 feet in length and more than 10 feet deep. These tortoises excavate so much soil that scientists consider them ecosystem engineers. Animals that physically create, modify, or destroy their environment for their benefit. In this case, the gopher tortoise burrows, benef burrows benefit more than 400 other animals that share these living spaces. As a result, these tortoises are considered significant keystone species. An animal whose presence is vital to ecosystem and community stability and health. Gopher tortoises have declined by at least 80% since the 1880s, largely due to habitat loss. In the 1930s, during Herbert Hoover's presidency and the Great Depression, the gopher tortoise was known regionally as Hoover chickens. Okay. Local people captured many tortoises for food. On the move. Today, conservation strategies for gopher tortoises include translocation, moving individuals from one area to another to avoid human activity. This method has been used at such a large scale that gopher tortoises are one of the most translocated species in the United States. The open understory of gopher tortoise habitat is historically maintained by frequent natural fast-moving wildfires that burned low bushes and fallen branches but didn't harm the trees. The turtle squirrels kept the tortoises and many other animals safe from the flames. Today, this habitat is maintained by controlled burns. Yeah. That's just a burrow. There's a snake in there. Snake. Somebody was saying there's some food in there somewhere. Uh, 
don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right, Here. And that little bro? Yeah, yeah little I hole. think I see it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I think we're in the right spot. He's right there, but it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. Because of all the crap. Yeah. Here's the sign. There's supposed to be two snakes in there. Go for Curtis, 12 inches. Eastern rat snake, 84 inches. And eastern rat snake. So there's two different ones. Different colors, I guess. A gopher tortoise burrow can provide a safe refuge for many animals in this dry, sandy environment. The burrows provide homes that protect more than 400 other species from the frequent fires that are an important part of this ecosystem. Don't go over here now. Get another look at the alligators. He's got green toenails. <laughs> okay. Who gets that job? Hooded Merkinster, 16 inches. Florida Soft Shell, 24 inches. River Cooter, 12 inches. Southern Painted turtle, 5 inches. Florida gar, 4.4 inches. And spotted gar, I don't know if that's supposed to be 44 inches or they missed a decimal. That's 44 inches. That's a big one. There's three turtles right there. Or tortoises, I don't know which one. I think these are turtles. Are these turtles? They can be turtles, I think. Okay, there's another one. Yeah, I'm not too busy. There's a turtle. Yeah. They added to it. Yeah. There's one of the fish. There's the bird. I can't see. Oh, yeah. I from Atlanta Airport and drove up to work. Excuse me, I've been there. And showed her his truck and said, here's my grandson's truck, showing him around. There's a, there's a, there's a fish. Yeah. Let's wait a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the one duck attacked the other one. I think. The one that attacked the other one was the hooded. Okay. There's a couple of turtles back there. Yeah, that's like a mallard duck. Big fish swimming around. Are those the gars? Or the gar, or there's another one? Uh, I don't think that's those are gar. Gar, keep it in the I don't know what that is behind the turtle. Is that another type of turtle? It looks weird. That yeah. one right there. That's a turtle. Okay. Different, different breeds, I think. That's probably the Florida soft here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's having fun. <laughs> yeah. What the? That's what it was. 13 and a half inches. Yeah. yeah. That's like I said. Bowfin, 43 inches. Northern Cardinal, 8 and 3 quarter inches. The Eastern Bluebird, 7 inches. Florida Red Belly Turtle, 14 and 3 quarter inches. And Common Carp, 48 inches. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. 
wasteland or wonderland. In the past, wetlands were viewed as wastelands because their wet, spongy soil was unsuitable for agriculture or large-scale human development. Today, we know wetlands serve many, many key roles. Besides serving as a home for some pretty amazing creatures, humans benefit from services provided by wetlands. The Mississippi River Delta ecosystems alone provide 12 to 47 billion dollars in benefits to people each year, 4.9 trillion per year by wetlands worldwide. Wetland services, flood water storage, acting as natural sponges to trap and slowly release flood waters over time. Water filtration, removing sediment, excess nutrients, pesticides, and metals that can make their way to the ocean. Buffer zones, reducing the wind and wave impacts from tropical storms and hurricanes. Satellite image of Hurricane Katrina, that was in 06, I think. Uh, no, 04. No, wait. I don't recall Katrina being here when I was here last. It was 05, I think. Okay. Right around in that time. Um, it is the costliest natural disaster as well as one of the five deadliest hurricanes in the history of the U.S. Southern tip of Florida. Uh-huh. This is yeah, Florida. At about here is going to be where Jacksonville is, yeah. ballpark. It's around the coast of Florida. This is basically, can you see kind of the swamp land area? Uh -huh. This is like where the Mississippi River Delta. Yeah, that was a big one. I'm going to put you in town. Wetlands are some of the most biologically productive ecosystems in the world. They provide critical habitat for countless plants and animals, including many endangered species. In fact, more than one-third of the threatened and endangered species in the U.S. are dependent on wetlands. Oh, wow. Hello, big boy. <laughs> River giants again. Uh, removing adult river giants from their native waters would be harmful to the long term survival of these species in the wild. The Tennessee Aquarium has been raising most of these fish in captivity since 2008. Some started out as juveniles, only three to four inches in length. We expect them to continue to grow to spectacular sizes in the years to come. Arapaima, 14 feet. Alligator Gar, 10 feet. Giant Gormus, 27 inches. He's a one of small ones. Freshwater Whip Ray, 58 inches across disc. So it's not exactly a stingray. No, it's a ray though. Yeah, it's a ray, but it's not a stingray. Red tailed catfish, 52 inches. And striped catfish, 51 inches. And there's more on my side. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here he comes. Wow. I cannot get him on the camera. Wait, there we go. Wow. He is big. What is that one? I think that's, that's the Arapaima. The 14 foot one. Holy cow. He's a little guy. <laughs> yeah. There's, that, that's one of the catfish. Oh my God, that's a big catfish. That might be the Angigius. No, that's the striped one. He's dark. Unless he's, there's another one over here. Yeah, there is another one over there. Giant Pangasius. Yeah, I think that might have been him. That one's 10 feet. Yeah. Got alligator gar, 10 feet. Asian bony tongue, David. Sorry. <laughs> Three feet. Critically endangered is this black one over here you're looking at. But the top two fish, you're getting. Yeah, no, I'm getting to those, David. <laughs> Must a Joe won money? I guess. I don't know. 27 inches. Baramundi, 77 inches. Six and a half feet. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Air Pema again. And Lake Sturgeon, seven feet. Okay. Next exhibit is this way. National Geographic explorer Dr. Zeb Hogan and Thai fishermen tag and release a giant freshwater stingray along the banks of the Mekong River in central Thailand. That thing is huge. Uh -huh. White river giants, or wild river giants, are impressive in their own right. They reveal important clues about the environmental health of our freshwater source resources. Their very presence in a river system indicates a high level of biodiversity. These big fish, like all living things, depend on clean water for survival. There's a giant Mekong catfish in Cambodia. It's tough being big. River giants share something in common. Many of them could vanish from the wild in our lifetimes. Despite their size or because of it, they face many threats. Oversi overfishing, dams, pollution, and habitat destruction are taking their toll. Being big and at the top of the food chain has advantages and disadvantages. River giants. River giants are spectacular aquatic animals growing to lengths of at least six feet. These giant fish live in diverse freshwater habitats on almost every continent. However, these species are rapidly disappearing. Many of those remaining are found only in remote locations. Beluga sturgeon, maximum size 26 feet. <laughs> giant pangaceous catfish, maximum size 10 feet. And it shows where they are found. Bear Mundi, maximum size six and a half feet. Bear of Pema, maximum size 14 feet. And Alligator Garb, maximum size 10 feet. We've chosen to showcase a collection of river giants in one exhibit so that more people can learn to appreciate not only their scale and unique physical characteristics, but also their important roles in nature. You remember the uh, segment in Minnesota, Ayla? Uh huh. Where Jundalar caught the big fish? Uh huh. Is that what this is? That was a beluga sturgeon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now you get an idea of how big the big you caught was. Yeah. Because we couldn't really tell that. <laughs> well, in the story, it's hard yeah. to tell. And there's the ray. Is he about to get out? <laughs> Is he about to get out? Look, look at him go. Me and your daddy got to swim with those. That's really cool. Who do you think was scared, mommy or daddy? Mommy. No, <laughs> daddy. Daddy didn't like this. He thought, ooh, gross. Would you think that? No, sweet. Do you think they're sweet? They are sweet. Oh, look, here comes the best friend. Well, here comes the one. Wow. Can they Those stick out? Cute. Can they stick out? To Isn't that cool? Look at the sizes. Look at that. Look at that. Jesus! You see him open his mouth? Uh, kinda. <laughs> Holy cow. How did that Frank get out there? He swam up there. Look at these things. What are those called? Oh. How does he get out there when he swam up there? Oh, look, he's coming to see you. Yeah. Stay right there, stay right there. Take a picture with them. Look at me and smile. Say cheese. What? 
Right, right. Don't and those the glass. Oh yeah. I don't think everybody wants to get wet. No. And it's got the same sign that we read earlier for River Giants as far as what kind of fish. The tale of two fish. Fishes. Lake Sturgeon's success. Lake Sturgeon has disappeared from the Tennessee River. I think I read this earlier, didn't I? I guess not. By the 1970s, in 1998, Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute helped begin a Lake Sturgeon release program that is still active today. TNACI and its partners have raised and released more than 115,000 Lake Sturgeon in the Tennessee River and its tributaries. Annual monitoring and recreational fishing reports indicate these river giants are recovering. The success of this long-term conservation effort depends in part upon co cooperative efforts to protect the water quality in our rivers and streams. Chinese paddlefish. Chinese paddlefish may already be extinct due to overfishing and habitat destruction. In 1981, the construction of the Gezhuba Dam on the Yangtze River blocked the migration route of their spawning run. The Chinese paddlefish is listed as critically endangered. Only two have been seen in the wild since 2002. Without any restoration programs, the future is bleak for the Chinese paddlefish as their habitat and water quality continue to decline. That's sad. How can you can help? Protecting fresh water is not only important to river giants, but also makes a difference to the world ocean. Remember, pollution that begins in your backyard can eventually end up downstream. You can help keep these habitats healthy by minimizing your water usage and reducing waste. Here are some specific ways to get involved. Help clean up rivers, recycle motor oil, reduce runoff, and use less fertilizer. And this is a continuation of the river giants. I don't remember this one, the Nile Perch, 78 inches. Did you know rivers are vital for transportation? A single barge can hold as much cargo as 60 trailer truck loads. <laughs> so 60 of our trucks. On a single barge? On a, yeah, on one barge. Of course, we've seen some big barges. And, well, and we've seen uh, toes of a dozen barges. Bear Mundy. Did you know that the Bear Mundy is a great tasting fish? Farmed right here in the United States, native to rivers and coastal waters from Australia to Eastern Asia, this fish is a prime example of sustainable seafood when cultured carefully. And I've seen that serve and protect them. Yeah. Some of the stuff. I think Red Lobster has it okay. on a lot of their things. Well, we love Red Lobster. That's where we went um, back in March to celebrate my birthday. Big fish. <laughs> we got some couple different ones over here. Wallago catfish, five feet, and red tail catfish, fifty-two inches, four and a quarter. Yeah, four and a third. Um, white sturgeon, twenty feet, and we saw the rest of these already. And we're going downhill some more. I guess, yeah. Because there's the Tennessee River and that's on the second level. Oh. I'm going to need a nap after this. <laughs> Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Share it out with your friends. Leave us a comment down below. Tell us what your favorite part was. If you saw an animal that you really like, your favorite animal. If you've been to this aquarium or any other aquarium around the world, let us know down in the comments down below. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you do subscribe and smash that bell icon so you get notifications when we upload new content, which will be, which will be at least one new video every week. We hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next one. We hope you enjoyed exploring the Delta Country section of the River Journey at the Tennessee Aquarium with Wolf Spirit today. Check out the next section, Rivers of the World.